Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the next commentary video on the channel. And this commentary will go over something rather near and dear to my heart, which is the TF2 economy. Now, for context, I have been a trader for many years, or at least I was. Uh, I peaked around 2016, and 2016, 2017, I was really big in the economy. Uh, I traded a lot, had a lot of uh, had a lot of assets moving through my inventory. Um, my backpack was worth thousands. It was it was a whole thing. Uh, now I'm more of a collector, um, and I rarely really buy stuff anymore. But um, I I kind of have uh, a lot of practical um, practical uh, experience in in the TF2 economy, as well as I have academic experience. I wrote a uh, a research paper that ended up being around 23 pages for one of my college classes. So I kind of want to delve into the problems of the TF2 economy and why it has become increasingly more competitive and increasingly more uh, unlikely that it will see a return to the uh, overall prosperity of the good old days, right? So I really want to hone in on three points. Uh, number one is the inflation of refined metal. Refined metal is the basis for pricing uh, for pricing keys other than the Manco store. And while keys maintain a relatively stable value of around two dollars to two fifty, uh, because they are tied to being bought with real currency, refined metal is constantly being produced via the crafting system. And there's no real profitable sink. And what I mean by that is that there is no way to get rid of this massive amount of uh, resources uh, that is profitable for anybody who crafts it, right? And this has led to a key to refined ratio that is way out of whack. Right now on Packpack.tf, which is the uh, overall uh, standard source for pricing, uh, one key is roughly 76 refined metal. Now, that is a bit of a problem because it prevents new players from getting into the economy. Because, And, and that kind of leads into my next point of the inability for new players to get to enter into the economy. Uh, because refined metal used to be the way that new players really got in without having to invest a massive amount of liquid cash into the game. Um, and to put it simply, new blood is the lifeblood of an economy. If new people aren't entering the economy, um, it will the, the economy will gradually stagnate because not enough people have the resources available to participate in profitable trading. And um, profitable, and it takes an insane amount of investing, either in time or in resources, to get into any sort of trading market that is profitable in TF2. By this, I mean like unusual trading. Um, because scrap banking, which was the, or, or low tier trading, doesn't produce good enough yields to be able to uh, incentivize people to join the economy. So they just won't. There's no incentive to join the economy. You know, no, no aspect of gameplay is locked behind economic activity. No hat gives you a, a gameplay advantage, no weapon um, that needs to be bought gives you a gameplay advantage. So it it there is no incentive for new people to join the economy, and they're not able to join wider trading in general, or at least profitable wider trading, because they just they don't have the resources to be able to um, due to the hyperinflation of refined metal. Now, this leads, of course, to a growing wealth inequality, and this is the main point that I feel a lot of TF2 trading YouTubers uh, and content creators have not really focused on. Um, as less people enter an economy, uh, less and less people or less and less people squabble over decreasing resources, right? Um, so it really leads to an opportunity. It really leads to the situation, rather where the richest in the economy, um, who have the resources, who have either the liquid assets in cash or the assets in TF2 to trade at this incredibly profitable level, um, it leads to the situation where they can buy up all the, 
all the profitable assets and just hold them and trade them amongst themselves. Um, which, it, as they buy up more and more resources, there's less and less for lower to mid-tier traders to really compete for. So it kind of leads to an overall stagnation of the economy, and it leads to uh, this growing wealth inequality, which, as in any real-world economy, eventually leads to some sort of uh, critical point, whether that be a revolution, whether that be complete economic restructuring, um, because as more people are unable to participate in the profitable sectors of an economy, the more and more will just drop out, as in TF2's case, because there's no incentive to participate, or in the real world, they will eventually uh, decide the system itself needs changing. Now, I'm aware that the overall economy, economic state will not change in TF2, the reasoning being that uh, Valve doesn't see an incentive for it to change. I mean, people are making money, people are... Um, People are making money, people are spending money in the game, and that's all Valve sees. They see the numbers, they see that the game is still profitable, so there's no incentive to change the economy, to, to introduce a refined metal sink, to introduce uh, some measures to try and even things out. Nothing of the sort. So, when I was a big tier trader, um, it really, I saw this problem coming. And it's only gotten worse as time has gone on, and it will only continue to get worse because there's no incentive to really, to really uh, fix it. So, in review, you know the the inability. So, in in, in review, I guess um, there's an inflation of refined metal, preventing new players from getting into the economy. And as less and less people get into the economy, the resources that are already present are being hoarded and being competed over by the people who do have the resources to get into the economy and to stay in the economy. The, the high-tier traders, the 1%, whatever you want to call them. So this was kind of a shorter video, but I just kind of wanted to get this all off my chest that the TF2 economy, um, it's not really going to get better um, unless the TF2 trading scene itself makes some major changes, which I don't suspect they will because it's controlled by people who don't see a problem with the system. You know, they're making money, so what, what does it matter that the wider system should change? Um, so if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to respond to them in the comments below. And I, uh, I hope you all have a good day.